Hey everybody, I just wanted to make a quick video about nervous habits in children. I made uh, a YouTube video and a lot of people were asking me why didn't I put it up on Facebook because they didn't see it. So here's a quick summary of the same video. If you want to see it on YouTube, you can go there and watch it. Type in nervous habits in children, Tony Galvin, you'll find it there. So nervous habits. Um, very often kids come to me, um, parents bring them in with problems like... Um, the most obvious one or the most common one is nail biting. So lots of children have the nail biting issue and that's kind of an obvious one because it comes from, nail biting comes from nervousness, right? And it's a really obvious one to be able to, to see that the child is getting nervous because it's their first day at school or first day back at school or they're going to be in a school play and so you see the nervousness building and then they start biting their nails and start getting really nervous and then, you know, then the habit kicks in and that's where they're, and that's just, that's just part of their cycle. But for other things, and so you can see that it's fear-based. But then for other children, they seem to have nervous habits that don't seem to be related to anything directly. They're just always fidgeting. Uh, they might be like, you know, itching their nose here or kind of pulling on their ear or doing something sort of strange like standing on one leg or, you know, fidgeting. Or sometimes often I deal a lot with children that have tics as well. And that's another one where you can't really say it's exactly related to something. But it's like the nervous system's doing something a bit weird and it's sort of out of the child's control. They can't really stop it. And what you find is like you can, what you don't want to do as a parent is if you bring it to the child's attention, what can sometimes happen is that you can create a bigger problem because th suddenly they become self-conscious of what's actually happening to them. And that can actually make them uh, worse. And, uh, you know, that's the last thing you want to do as a parent. You're trying to relieve the symptoms rather than uh, actually make them uh, get worse. So, um just give you a quick example of I worked on a young fella uh, who was about seven or eight and when I worked on him he he had a lot going on so he had dyslexia he had fear of the dark he had a lot of sub subconscious fears he was pretty good at sport and happy enough and socially but there was a lot of sort of background stress going on he was bedwetting as well and there was a few other things going on for him and uh, but what I noticed on the first day I worked on him was that he had a, a really pronounced ridge of a kind of a rash underneath his bottom lip and that was from like constantly licking his lip and I, I watched him do it a few times during the day uh, during the, the session and um, just it was just really obvious to me like you couldn't mistake the, the ridge so I just thought it was interesting you know I did an overall assessment on him on the day and, it, and assessed that his moral reflex was out of kilter so he's, he's stuck in fight or flight a little bit and he had good reasons for that for when he was younger so I did an overall session on him and the kinesiology treatment that I did on him is generally designed to sort of calm everything down, right? Just get the body to relax and feel more calm and safe, right? And so lots of the techniques that I applied, acupressure techniques, etc., do that to you. They make you feel relaxed and they do it in terms of certain types of stress and in terms of the moral reflex going on. This is what we tried to target. So he came back a week later and... I immediately noticed that this ridge under his lip was gone. And his mom had said to me that she had noticed he was, overall, he was more calm. He noticed that he was a bit calmer, but a seven-year-old would hardly notice a difference, you know. So, but mom, mom noticed the significant difference, that he had calmed down a lot. So, um, when I asked the mom about, did she notice that his lip, he wasn't licking his lip as much, she said, yeah, she said, yeah, he's definitely stopped doing that as well. And so I asked the young fellow about it, and I said, did you notice that you stopped licking your bottom lip? And he said, no. And, and then I asked, I asked, I asked him, uh, did you know that you used to do it? And he said, yeah, I used to do it. And I said, you, but does it feel any different now? And he said, no. So the interesting thing about that is, is that he noticed nothing happening. There was no change in terms of like, there was no absolutely zero conscious effort on his behalf to stop this lick, lick, uh, the, the licking of the lip. It just hap happened as a result of calming down his nervous system. And that to me, I learned an awful lot as a result of that because we didn't deliberately set out to target the, that issue of the lip, but in resolving kind of overall stress, it, it had a, an overall effect on his nervous system. And the, 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 lick, the licking of the lip was just a symptom of that kind of background stress that was running in him all the time, which we resolved. And so that's very often the case when you do work like uh, on children with kinesiology. You might see a whole host of changes. Like what his mom saw was that he became generally calmer 
and also that this issue of the lip just went away. And um, I see that kind of thing happening all the time. We did plenty more work on him and, and, and reduced more and more of the stress in his nervous system, working on the reflexes and working on other things. And overall, like his, his, his kind of groundedness and his calm state generally improved pretty dramatically. And he, he also improved lots of other things like eye function and stuff like that improved. So his reading got better and his concentration improved dramatically as well because the calmer you are, the more you can concentrate and the more easily the easier it is for you to sustain focus. And so that's a lot of the work that we that I do is about reducing the background stress that makes you distracted and makes these symptoms of nervous habits come forward unconsciously. So um, yeah, kinesiology is fantastic for like reducing that kind of stress uh, on the nervous system and then you see these great changes. So there you go, that's nervous habits in children. Hope you enjoyed it and uh, tune in for more next week. Have a good weekend.